the Sahara Desert, an endless sea of sand shaped by the winds stretching across northern Africa from the Atlantic to the Nile. In the northwest, the Sahara begins here in Morocco, just south of the Atlas Mountains. We're Chris and Lydia. Join us today as we explore these massive sand dunes by four-wheel drive. Along the way, we'll experience the way of life of the local nomadic tribes, learn how a desert oasis is formed, and soak in the rhythms of traditional Gnawa music. We then journey deeper into the desert aboard its most iconic mode of transport, the camel, to a hidden camp where we'll spend the night amongst the sand dunes under a sky full of stars. And trust me, when you see the camp, it's going to blow your socks off. We arrived in the town of Mazuga in southern Morocco late yesterday afternoon. Mazuga sits right on the edge of the Sahara Desert and serves as the gateway to the towering Erg Chebi sand dunes. These golden dunes are everything you imagine the Sahara to be, and the view from our hotel, right on the desert's doorstep, is nothing short of spectacular. After a peaceful night's rest, the desert beckoned, so we couldn't pass up the chance to wake up before dawn and see the sunrise over the dunes. up early to see the sunrise over the Sahara. Just walked from the town through some little forest of date palms and then over this wall which seems to separate the Sahara Desert from civilization. Little animal footprints running along the top of the sand dune next to mine. morning from the Sahara Desert in Morocco. It's a little fresh this morning but a nice clear sky. It's a lovely morning for a beautiful sunrise. I made my way back to the hotel and was surprised to find that Lydia had woken up in time to catch the sunrise as well though she enjoyed it from the comfort of the hotel terrace. It's currently 6.52 in the morning and I've gotten up early to watch the sunrise and there she is in all her glory. Oh, that was a bird that just came <laughs> behind me. What a magnificent way to start the day. I'm glad we were up at dawn. We had a full day ahead and wanted to make the most of every minute. This morning we're heading off on a four-wheel drive safari into the Sahara Desert. It's a beautiful warm 33 degrees, uh, so plenty of sun cream on this morning. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> First stop was just down the street at the Mizuga Oasis, the same one I walked through early this morning on my way to see the sunrise. The oasis is a patchwork of individual plots, each one belonging to a local family. Passed down through generations, these small sections are carefully cultivated with date palms and crops, irrigated by underground springs. Low walls or fences mark the borders, creating a mosaic of greenery in the desert. Families work together to maintain the oasis, ensuring it continues to nourish both the land and the people who depend upon it. Water is transported to Mizuga Oasis through an ancient system of underground canals called Kataras. Dug by hand centuries ago, these tunnels use gravity to channel water from distant sources in the mountains to the oases of the Sahara without the need for pumps. This ingenious system has allowed life to flourish in the desert for generations. Above the tunnels, a series of wells are dug into the ground, allowing access to the flowing water below. These wells also serve as maintenance points, 
in case the tunnels become blocked with sand. Throughout the region, you can often see long lines of equally spaced wells snaking their way across the plains. The camels went walking two by two, hurrah, hurrah. In two. Walking, two by two, hurrah. He looks like he's singing that one back. It's kind of fun driving around in these former drives, but we're driving around the outside of the desert. It's got lots of little camps and hotels and a village or two. So people live out here in the edge of the desert. We've also seen some rally cars driving through, kicking up all the dust and some motorbikes. I think there must be some kind of rally going on at the moment. certainly leave you with a mouthful of dirt so <laughs> hopefully there's not too many more coming past. the area live. They're cooking some bread in a, on a fireplace in a little tent and doing some weaving. It's very humbling to see how the locals here live. So they live out here in the heat, survive the dust and they raise their children here and their livestock and it's a pretty harsh reality. I can say uh, I'd much prefer to be living in Australia and how lucky we are to have the lifestyle that we have. It's hot, it's really hot out here. It's windy, it's sandy, it's uncomfortable. One thing I've noticed out here while walking around I'm trying to find shade and there's no shade. Where the sun's positioned, it's right above us, so we're not getting any shade at all, so it's very, very cool. Yeah, it's like by summer, and then they will move up to to mountains. Yeah. They don't travel for themselves, they travel for their animals. Right. Oh, grass, right and the water. Staying here, it's not gonna help in summer.
After a memorable visit to the Bedouin camp, our driver had one more surprise for us, taking us to the highest point around for an amazing view across the desert's rocky plains to the golden sand dunes beyond. It's moments like this that make you feel like you're on another planet. After soaking in the view, it was time to head to our final stop for the day, the village of Kamlia, famous for its traditional Ganawa music and a local delicacy, Berber pizza. Kamlia is a small village with a rich cultural heritage, home to the descendants of former sub-Saharan slaves who continue to preserve their vibrant Ganawa musical traditions. The heart of Ganawa music lies in its instruments. The gumbri, a three-stringed bass lute, is the soul of the music, producing deep resonant tones that set the rhythm. Complementing the gumbri are the krakeb, large metal castanets that create sharp percussive clacking sounds, adding both rhythm and energy to the performance. Together with tabel drums, these instruments create a hypnotic and spiritual sound. It's more than just music, it's a celebration of life and culture, passed down through generations. Before the main act, we were treated to an impromptu performance from a star of the future. To be honest, I could have happily stayed here and watched these guys for hours, but it won't be the last time we enjoy Ganawa music on our Moroccan adventure. In any case, my tummy was rumbling louder than the drums, so it was time to head to a little restaurant down the street for a late lunch. So this is... Berber pizza, so we made it with onion, carrot, potatoes, oh, eggs, okay. with the beef meat. Beef meat. So some spices that we have here, like sal, camoon, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and this is how spicy if you need to, to try. Mm. Chili, yeah, it's chili. Okay. This is a map yeah, of the so area. Much. This is where we stayed last Thank night. Mazuga and Hamlia is where we are. Now that's the music town, where we listen to the drum, um, music and had a lovely lunch and we're going to the Sahara tonight and then tomorrow we're heading up here. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, okay, Shukran. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Heading back to the hotel for a quick shower, maybe a swim if we're lucky, before we head into the desert for our desert camp tonight. After a refreshing swim, it was time to set off and meet our camels, our ships of the desert 
who would guide us deep into the golden Erg Chebby dunes to our desert camp. Along the way, we passed through the base camp of the Morocco Desert Challenge, the source of all the buggies, bikes and trucks that have been whizzing by us throughout the day. It turns out this rally is the second largest desert rally raid in the world, so it's a major event. We're a long way up here on the camel's back. What's his name? Jada. Jada. Keep the arms straight. And we're down. Oh, just like an expert. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, hiker. Thanks Jada for keeping Lydia safe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Welcome to our camp. <laughs> or should I say glamp? Shakran. Voila. Wow. This is how you camp. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is this camping? This is camp. If this is camping, then I want to go camping every weekend. Yeah, I can camp like this anytime. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look, this is Cammy, it's got a shower. It's got a sink and running water. Oh, it's a waterfall shower. Wow, that's pretty fancy. Oh, we've got a little treasure chest here. Lovely we've sink. And I think that's the convenience. <laughs> Have a quick look in there. Oh, it's a flush toilet. Conditioner, like little Aladdin's bottles. 
I don't feel like we're worthy. We say we're camping in the Sahara and then we come to this. <laughs> oh, you are worthy. Of course you're worthy, honey. <laughs> Look at our little uh, little area at the front, our little garden with a nice little gazebo. Pumpkin soup. And of course, olives. Looks like an apple salad for our next course. Next course has arrived and it looks like it's some kind of vegetable dish. Maybe chicken, cheese, crispy thing. Tomato with cheese on it and some kind of quiche thing. But it's probably none of those. Um, something very different. I haven't had anything like this before in Morocco, so we'll see how we go. So I was wrong. This thing is like a potato crisp. And this is another potato dish with melted cheese on the top and capsicum. It's, it's all really nice, so. Beautiful. Dessert is on. So well presented. This is certainly a pinch yourself moment. Dawn in the Sahara. Oh look honey, there's some of the big dune buggies. Should we go and put the tyres down because they were so noisy last night? Imagine a um, mosquito times a million. <laughs> That's what they sounded like in there. At midnight. <laughs> Let's go and find a sand dune that we can see the sunrise over. Oh man. There's the camels. Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Camel.
This is our camp in the Sahara. We came in last night, so this is what it looks like by daylight. Came out here later when the fire was going and the drummers were drumming and had a bit of a dance. It was a really nice evening. Now, this is a bit of a fancy camp. I don't think this is the way the traditional traders used to camp when they crossed the Sahara. This is our humble abode. This is the restaurant down the end. Yes, I said restaurant in a camp. After a Moroccan breakfast, it was time to bid a bittersweet farewell to our luxury camp and saddle up our beautiful camels once again, ready for the peaceful trek back to civilization, taking one last look at the golden dunes surrounding us. Good morning, Jada. Ready for our trip back to civilization? Oi, good morning. <laughs> and we're up, just like that. June buggies. The noisy buggies. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on our Sahara Desert adventure today. If you enjoyed our video and want to see more, please subscribe to the Roving Bellies and leave us a comment as we love hearing from you and finding out where you're from. We hope you come roving with us again in Morocco next time. Bye for now.